In this lecture, we are going to learn about another transformation method in JavaScript called as reduce method. The reduce method is also used on an array. So the reduce method is a powerful tool in JavaScript that allows you to iterate over an array and accumulate a single value. So unlike map method and filter method, the reduce method does not return us an array. Instead, it returns us a single value. This method also takes a callback function as an argument and it applies that callback function to each element of the array, reducing it to a single value. Let's try to understand reduce method with an example. So here we have an array of numbers. I'm calling it as numbers. Now let's say what we want is we want to calculate the sum of each element of this numbers array. So we want to loop over each element of this numbers array and at the end we want to calculate the sum of each element of this numbers array and return that sum so here we want to return a single value we want to return the sum of each element of this numbers array and for that we can use reduce method and to use reduce method on the array in this case this numbers array we are going to call the reduce method this reduce method it takes two parameters the map and filter method it takes one parameter which is the callback function but the reduce method it takes two parameters here also the first parameter will be a callback function for the callback function you can use anonymous function syntax or you can use arrow function syntax so for this example i am going to use the anonymous function syntax okay so the first parameter of the reduce method is the callback function and the second parameter is an initial value for the accumulator and i'll explain you what an accumulator is so here since we want to calculate the sum of each element of this numbers array let's say the initial value of the accumulator is zero now what is this accumulator unlike the callback function which we pass to map method or filter method the callback function which we pass to reduce method it takes four optional parameters the first parameter will be the accumulator you can name it anything you can call it acc or a or accumulator anything let me call it as acc for accumulator and then the second parameter will be the current element on which the reduce method is looping over the third parameter will be the index of the current element and the fourth parameter will be the original array except accumulator this element index and array is same as what we have seen for the map and filter method so this element parameter it will be assigned with the current element of the array on which this reduce method is looping over so for the first iteration this el will be assigned with value 1 for the second iteration this el will be assigned with value 2 for the third iteration this el will be assigned with value 3 and so on and then this i will be assigned with the index of the current element so for the first iteration this i its value will be 0 because the first element is present at index 0 for the second iteration this i will be 1 because the second element is present at index 1 for the third iteration this i will be 2 because the third element is present at index 2 and so on and this arr it will be assigned with the original array for each iteration so for the first iteration for element 1 this arr it will be assigned with the original array in this case this numbers array for the second iteration also this arr will be assigned with the numbers array for the third iteration also this arr will be assigned with the numbers array and so on so if i go ahead and if i try to log the element the index and the arr argument if i save the changes you will see that for each iteration the el is logging the current element of the number so for the first iteration the current element will be one that has been logged here its index will be zero that has been logged here and it is also logging the original array so the original array is this numbers array so this array has been logged here for the second iteration the second element in the array that has been logged here its index has been logged here and the original array itself has been logged here for the third iteration the third element of the array which is 3 that has been logged here for index it has logged its index which is 2 and for arr it has logged the original array now what is this acc here this accumulator is basically the accumulated value for each iteration and for the first iteration this accumulator will always be the initial value which we are specifying here in this case for the first iteration this acc will be 0 
because that's what we are specifying here for the accumulator. If I specify 10 here, then for the first iteration, this ACC will be 10. And from the next iteration, the accumulator value will be the new accumulated value. Let's try to understand it. So let me remove this console.log statement. Let me change back the initial value of the accumulator to zero. And what do we want to do here? We want to add each element of this numbers array. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add accumulator with the current element. And we are storing the current element in this EL variable. And I'm also going to return this value. Now, when I'm returning this value, this ACC plus EL, it is going to return us a new value. And that new value will be assigned to this accumulator. So for the first iteration, this ACC will be zero. The current element will be one. So zero plus one will be one. One will be returned and that will be assigned to this accumulator. So the new value of accumulator is one. Now, when the second iteration will start, Again, the second element is 2 and we are trying to add to the second element with the accumulator. New value of accumulator is 1. The current element value is 2. So 1 plus 2 will be 3 and that 3 will be returned and it will be assigned to this accumulator. So the new value of accumulator is 3. Now for the third iteration, the current element will be 3. So when we are trying to add accumulator and EL, the new value of accumulator is 3 and the current element value is 3. So 3 plus 3 will be 6. That 6 we are returning from here. So 6 will be assigned to this accumulator. Now the new value of accumulator is 6. Now the next iteration will start. For the next iteration, for the fourth iteration, the EL will be 4 and the new value of accumulator is 6. So 6 plus 4 will be 10. That 10 will be returned and it will be assigned to this accumulator again. So the new value of accumulator is 10. And when the last iteration will start for the fifth element, the EL value is five, accumulator value is 10. So 10 plus five, it will be 15. And that 15 will be assigned to this accumulator. And now, since there is no more iteration, since there is no more elements in this numbers array, there will be no more iteration. So the final value of the accumulator which in this case is 15, that will be returned by this reduce method. So let me go ahead and let me create a variable. Let's call it sum. So the sum of these elements will be returned and it will be assigned to the sum variable. If I go ahead and if I log that sum and if we save the changes, you will see 15 has been logged here. If I add one more element here, let's say six, and if I save the changes, the new sum will be 21. So as you can see, this reduce method, it is not returning us an array. It is returning us a single value. And I also hope that now you understand what is this accumulator. So when you use this reduce method, there you need to pass two arguments. The first argument will be the callback function, which will be applied to each element of the source array for each iteration. And the second value is the initial value for the accumulator. All right, so the reduce method, it is a powerful tool in JavaScript that allows you to iterate over an array and accumulate a single value. As I mentioned before, it takes a callback function as an argument and it applies it to each element of the array. And finally, it reduces it to a single value. So the reduce method, it also takes a source array on which it works and it takes two arguments. It takes a callback function and an initial value for the accumulator. The callback function is executed for each element of the array and the returned value of the callback function becomes the new accumulator for the next iteration. And once the iteration is complete, once the loop is complete, the reduce method, it is going to return us a single value, the final value of the accumulator. It does not return us an array. Let's try to understand this reduce method with another example. So here what we are doing is we are calculating the sum of each element of the numbers array. Now what we want is let's say we want to find the largest number in this numbers array. For that what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this array a little bit so that we do not have the number in sequence. Okay. And now from this numbers array, I want to find the largest number, the largest element. 
so for that again we are going to use the reduce method so let me create a variable let's call it max and we know that the reduce method is going to return us a single value so that value i want to assign to this max variable now to use this reduce method on this numbers array again on the numbers array we are going to call the reduce method to this reduce method now i'm going to pass a callback function and this time i'm going to use arrow function syntax this arrow function syntax it is going to receive the accumulator let me call it as a and it is going to receive the current element so let me call it as el i can also specify the index and the array but since we are not going to use it in the callback function body i'm not specifying that these parameters these are optional so if you want you can omit them now here what we want is first of all let me specify the body of this callback function and let's also specify the initial value for the accumulator now here if i want i can specify an initial value for the accumulator as the first element so i can pass maybe seven but if i don't specify an initial value for the accumulator in that case the accumulator will be assigned with the first element by default okay so here i'm not specifying an initial value for the accumulator in that case this accumulator let me call it as acc to make it more meaningful so in this case this accumulator it will be automatically assigned with the first element of this numbers array and now inside this we are going to write a logic and for that here i am going to use the math class and on that we have this max variable i mean this max method and to this max method we are going to pass the accumulator which is present in this acc parameter and the current element so what this max method will do is out of these two values whichever will be greater that will be returned and we want to assign that as a new value to the accumulator so from here i'm simply going to return that value so here for the first iteration this acc it will be assigned with the first element of the array which is seven and this el it will also be assigned with seven so in this case since both the numbers are same seven will be returned and the new value for the accumulator is seven for the second iteration accumulator is seven el is two so out of seven and two seven is greater so this max method is it is going to return a seven and that new value will be assigned to this accumulator so still the new value of the accumulator is seven then for the third iteration this accumulator is seven and this el is 10. now out of seven and 10 10 is greater so 10 will be returned by this max method that 10 will also be returned from this callback function and now 10 will become the new value for this accumulator so in this way the comparison will happen and after the loop completes whichever value is assigned to this accumulator that will be the maximum value and that will be returned by this reduce method so if i go ahead and if i log max here it should log the maximum value from this numbers array in this case the maximum value is 10 so if i save the changes you will see that 10 is logged so this is the use of reduce method the reduce method is used to accumulate the value from an array it does not return us a new array like map and filter instead it returns us a single value and in order to reduce the elements of an array we also need to specify an accumulator so this accumulator will be the first argument of the callback function which we are passing to this reduce method and then the rest other arguments will be same as we have in map and filter methods and if we don't specify an initial value for the accumulator explicitly it will be assigned with the first element of the source array on which we are using the reduce method so this reduce method is the third transformation method in javascript the map method filter method and reduce method these are the three transformation methods in javascript this is all from this lecture if you have any questions from this lecture, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.